Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about Ihwa Women's University. In this video we will cover up admissions timeline, programs, eligibility, selection process, required documents and scholarships. And also at the end of the video I will tell you about my experience with the application process. So if you're interested in this video, stay tuned and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel turn on your bell notification so you won't miss my new videos and also don't forget to put thumbs up okay let's start I will go through admissions guide for international applicants and I will put all the screenshots at the left of my side so you can take a screenshot of what I'm saying and so on. Here I have spring 2021 admissions guide for international applicants. The dates are actually real time. So yes, let's start. This video I will cover up only undergraduate programs and how undergraduate students can apply. So I'm not gonna talk about graduate programs or master's program or PhD and so on, okay? Only undergraduate because I have experienced that and yeah. So here is our timeline. So admission process divides into three rounds, which means you can apply for first round, for second round or for third round. But for third round, there is no scholarship. So when you apply for first round, which starts in September, it started a few days ago already, so be quick. But when you apply for first round and if you fail, unfortunately, you can apply for second round. And if you fail for second round too, you can apply for third round. So this is actually really convenient for all the students who really want to study there. So they can try themselves like for three times. So in this application process, there three important steps online application submission of required documents in person or by post and admissions decisions announcement and also scholarship decisions if you want to apply for scholarship and two others are not that important because these two others are for those who already got accepted okay next we have some notes Applicants must submit hard copies of required documents in person or by post after completing their application online. When you send all your documents online, you need to send them by post to or in person if you live in Korea. And here's the address and everything, all the links, all the information, all the contact information will be in the description box. So don't worry, you can find them there. Now let's look at the programs that IHWA provides. When you apply for IHWA, you need to choose your major right away, okay? Some of universities, they don't ask you to choose your major, but some do. Now let's look at the colleges and you can see the division and departments by yourself. College of Liberal Arts, College of Social Sciences, College of Natural Sciences, ELTEC, College of Engineering, College of Music, College of Art and Design, College of Business Administration, College of Sciences and Industry Convergence, College of Nursing, and Scranton College. And there was a note that this Scranton College provides all the courses in English. Some of the colleges and departments, they're taught in English, some of them taught in Korean, but most of them are actually taught in English, which is good. Next, we have eligibility. So first one is that you should be foreigner, which means you should not hold any Korean citizenship. You should have foreign citizenship and your parents too. But if one of your parents has Korean citizenship, you cannot be considered as international student. So probably you can apply as Korean student. However, if you're Korean or if you had Korean citizenship and somehow you change it to international, you should submit some official documents that prove that you change your nationality from Korean to foreigner. Second one is programs and the eligibility for each for specific students. So for undergraduate program for freshmen who are new applicants, you should know that GED Korean high school graduate equivalency test, homeschooling, cyber schooling, and other high school equivalency certificates are not considered as high school diploma. Please make sure that one. 
And for transfer students, applicants who have completed or are expected to complete at least two academic years in a university degree program before March 2021 and intend to transfer into the third year. So please make sure that you study for two years in different university and then you transfer for your third year. Then third one is language proficiency test. So you need to have topic test and IELTS or TOEFL. If you know topic is the same language proficiency but knowing your Korean level, so it's really important for Korean universities when you apply for them. So if you are undergraduate freshman applicant, which means you are a new one, not transfer student, you need to have topic level 3 or above. But if you are undergraduate transfer student, you need to have topic level 4 or above. Then, in case of English proficiency test scores, for TOEFL you need to have 80 and for IELTS 5.5 and for new tabs 326 or above. And also, all language proficiency test scores must remain valid until the document submission deadline of each round to be considered for admission. Please make sure that they are not expired. Let's move to selection process. So, for selection process, there are two main steps that they take and make sure that you know. So, applicants will be selected through a comprehensive evaluation of their academic capability, achievements, and potential based on their submitted documents. So, make sure that you have all good documents and we will talk about required documents in a bit. Second, application fee. Mm, this is really important and this is really painful for me. So, the application fee is 150,000 Korean won, which is $150. I know this is too expensive, it is super expensive, and I was so broke when I paid this much, and I was hating myself, I was hating everyone, but as you know, this is private university, I guess. It's not national university, it's private. That's why I think it's expensive. Then, apl the application cannot be cancelled once it has been submitted and the application fee is non-refundable. So please make sure that once you pay $150, you cannot get them back. I tried to get them back and I couldn't. <laughs> yes, I know. Okay, now let's move to required documents. Yes, and please listen carefully so that you don't have extra questions and you get everything right. So here I highlighted for you, R is for required documents and A is for those documents if you want to submit them or no. So, first you need to have your application form and please make sure that all your documents are or in Korean or in English, but not any other languages. Second, application supplement and scholarship application. Please also make sure that you submit them both online and by post. Third, official transcript of academic records and certificate of expected or already graduation. So if you already graduated your high school, you can submit your graduation certificate. But if you didn't, you can submit official certificate showing that you will graduate in expected date. Fourth, language proficiency test scores, test score report or certificates. Certificate. We already talked about that, but you can take a screenshot and just read deeply. Fifth, this is A, highlighted A. Documentation verifying contents in application supplement and scholarship application. And this is basically for master's degree. And also if it's kind of su uh, supplement documents, for supplement documents you can submit your SAT, ACT, IBT, AP, whatever you have. Six, we have passport, applicant, and both parents so when you submit your passports please make sure that you submit both your and your parents passport copy of your and parents passport showing that you are not korean and you have different citizenship next we have legal documents verifying relationship between applicant and both parents yes 
please send a document showing your relationship between you and your parents. Eight financial statements. And this financial statement is also the, the painful document. It was the painful document for me because you need to submit official bank statement showing a minimum, 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 okay, minimum, minimum balance of $20,000, $20,000, which is 23 million won. Oh, oh my god this really hurts my heart Oof. so yes this is really important document and it's in required list yes if you don't submit this you cannot apply and your application will be cancelled so please make sure that one too ninth supplement materials showing artistic or athletic ability oh this is really interesting and this is like required for applicants to art and athletic fields so if you apply for art or athletic college department read this one because this is for you and like i guess if you have any achievements in sports or art submit those too because it's good you can have bigger chance to get in next am i looking good am i Next, instructions on submission of required documents. So here are some in important things that I highlighted for you, so you don't go through a lot of things. First, after submitting application forms online, applicants must submit their required documents in person or by post. I think I repeated it for third time already, but please make sure this one because I get sometimes lots of questions. Even though I mentioned in my videos that you need to submit both online and by post, but still I get questions. Should I submit online or by post? I'm like, <sighs> damn. Okay, next one. Applicants who fail to submit all required documents, applicants whose documents do not arrive by the deadline, and applicants who fail to pay the application fee will be excluded from consideration for admission. So please make sure that you submit all your documents and please actually make a checklist of your documents. I did that one. And I guess when I applied for one university, they sent me a checklist just to check if I have all my documents and then I can submit them, which is really good. And like, you know, it's like we are organized and you don't waste your time. Okay, next one. Applicants may be asked to submit additional documents not listed in the required documents section of this admissions guide should further verification of the applicant's eligibility be necessary. And this is, I think, really good because if they really want to and accept you, they might ask for some extra documents. And I think this is really good because they will they really go through your application through your documents and if they see some potentials in you they really want you to take you so they will ask for extra documents now let's talk about really really interesting topic for all international students but if you're rich this might not really interest you but yeah so let's talk about scholarships ihwa has lots of scholarships which is really cool because some universities don't have some universities don't even provide any scholarship not talking like about fully funded ones but yes now let's look at these scholarships and in this part there are like scholarships both for those who apply and for those who already study in IHWA and for those who are in graduate school, I guess, yes. Here I highlighted like those scholarships for undergraduate applicants who are just applying now. EGPP, IHWA Global Partnership Program. The eligibility is that applicants from developing countries applying through the special admissions process for international applicants who demonstrate female leadership potentials. And also, here's the table of those developing countries. So if you find your country, you're free to apply for this scholarship. Then this scholarship covers 
full tuition including your admission fee so you will get your $150 back if you get the scholarship then housing fee for dormitory residents and plus stipend this is really good oh my god damn this is so good yeah and the duration is for freshman maximum eight semesters which is your whole undergraduate year and for transfer students maximum four semesters which means two years then we have iss international students scholarship and this international student scholarship divides into four types of scholarships oh, this is really cool iss f4 f2 f1 and fh1 the eligibility are actually kind of the same but for iss fh1 you need to have specific topic i'm just gonna leave it so you can read but for let's just say what they cover iss f4 covers full tuition including admissions fee and it's for maximum eight semesters which is for your whole undergraduate years then iss f2 covers full tuition including admission fee same as f4 and it covers maximum four semesters which is two years and iss f1 covers full tuition including admission fee also the same covers two semesters and fh1 is, and is the same coverage and it covers only first semester okay next we have ihua language center elc excellence in korean language scholarship and the eligibility is applicants seeking admission for undergraduate programs freshmen through the special admissions process for international applicants after having completed at least three semesters and level six of the elc korean intensive program and i think this is not for you but if you study in why you can take this one then the other scholarships are not for undergraduate applicants then how you can apply for this scholarship first you should have required forms print and submit the application supplement and scholarship application after completing online application second submission period is same as application period so please make sure you check all the timelines and the date and some side note some scholarship applicants may be contacted individually for a phone interview that's all for the admission guide and application process and all the required documents that you need to submit and so on and now let's move to some questions about the application process and what i have experienced personally because i didn't find anyone who i know that studies in ihua so i'm like okay i'm gonna do it why not so yes now i'm gonna interview myself and i will answer to questions that i usually ask other students as you know or if you might not know my name is munisa and, and i am from tajikistan which is in central asia and i applied for ihwa in 2019 september i did my application both online and by post and also i did visit Ihua because I studied in Korea in high school so it was good for me to actually visit Ihua by myself and it was so cool experience and Ihua looks so beautiful it's so beautiful there my application process was really stressful to be honest and I actually did all my application things literally few hours before the deadline it was so stressful and what I actually recommend you to do is that Please make sure to submit your application forms and do all your applications at least at least a week before the deadline because even if it's like a few days before the deadline it's so so stressful especially if you live abroad like if you're not in Korea please make sure that you send all your documents beforehand like one week ahead or like two weeks because who knows especially we have like coronavirus going on so you never know when your documents will arrive so please make sure that one too i actually explained already but the most important documents were topic and ielts like language proficiency tests and also your transcripts your graduation certificate but i submitted my certificate of expected date of graduation because i didn't graduate yet by that time and the bank bank statement 
was really important. Those documents are the most important and please make sure that you submit all awards and certificates or volunteer hours, whatever you have, because this is a huge, huge plus for you, for your application. You can get in easily if you have lots of documents showing that you are active, that you can be a leader, woman leader, female leader, because this is women's university. So, women power, yes. Basically, all universities ask the same questions. Why would you choose this major? What it will give you in the future? Talk about yourself. Please make sure that you write lots of things about your activities, what type of leader you are, how good you are, what are your good sides, what bad sides, and so on. Especially in my case, in my essays, I wrote that in my country, women are not really considered as leaders and so on. So I focus on that specific topic and I show that I can be a leader, I can be a good, I don't know, Ihuanian or so on. So yes, the essays are actually all about your leadership thing, how good you are and so on. And also what you're gonna do when you graduate or when you're gonna study there. I did not have any interview and I don't think anyone can have interview. I think only those people who apply for scholarship and if the admission office has some questions for like that applicant, they might have interview, but only for scholarship purpose. I think GPA is the key factor, but if you have really low GPA, as I did, my GPA wasn't that good, but if you have that, please make sure, and I always say, make sure that you write really good essays, really good essays and also submit all your awards, all your certificates, all your volunteer hours and so on. That can boost your chances to get in. That's the only tips that I can give you because I did experience this. I did apply for a scholarship but I did not get any scholarship because I did not actually submit topic level 3 I guess yeah I didn't get level level 3 that's why I guess I didn't get that's why if you have topic and if your topic level is really good you can get any type of scholarship like easily not like any type but you can get at least one scholarship please make sure that you don't submit your application like a few days before the deadline or a few hours before the deadline as I did and then please make sure that you write really good essays check them, check them, check them, rewrite them, and so on. Those are the most important things in your documents. Topic, test, IELTS, or TOEFL, and so on. Those documents are really important. Also, I can't say anything about life in there because I don't study there, and yes, I did reject to go there, to study there. Why? It's a completely different topic. That's why I'm not gonna talk about this in this video. So I can't say anything about life and food there. So I'm just gonna stop here. But once if I get back to Korea, I might do some tour videos around Ihua because it's really beautiful there. But yes, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and hopefully you got all the answers that you were looking for. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on your bell notification so you won't miss my new videos, put thumbs up and also you can check up other videos on how to apply for other Korean universities. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye!